Hi, I'm Will Sargison. Today we're going to be looking at a style of piano known as New Orleans R&B. So, New Orleans is a city with a rich and long history of legendary piano players, stretching all the way back to the mid-1800s with the music of Louis Moreau Gottschalk, on through Jelly Roll Morton, Professor Longhair, Fats Domino, and on into modern day players like Harry Connick Jr., John Cleary. So, New Orleans R&B as we know it sort of uh, came about in the late 1940s, early 1950s, and the godfather of this style was a man known as Professor Longhair, Henry Roland Bird. His first recordings from 1949 were a sort of a unique uh, gumbo of uh, West Indian rhythms, Caribbean rhythms, and bluesy, funky piano. Some consider him the godfather of the funk music movement. I'll play a little bit of his style now. There's a, a couple of pieces, Hey Little Girl and Hey Now Baby. So he liked a left hand pattern a bit like this on occasion. And then bluesy right hand motifs. And sometimes he went for a more generic rumba bass line with notes on beats one, the end of two, and then four, such as. So Fess was sort of the godfather of this sort of piano playing and I, uh, I recommend going back and checking out his material. He had some, uh, some beautiful recordings there that laid the groundwork arguably for a lot of mainstream funk that came later through artists like James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, now one of Professor Longhair's protégés was a young man who played guitar and piano by the name of Dr John who sadly passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, he also left behind a beautiful legacy of recorded music, some great funk records and New Orleans R&B records, and even some crazy sort of uh, voodoo, gris gris, psychedelic records in the late 60s. But we'll be focusing on some of his solo piano recordings. He did some beauties in the early 80s. Here's what he did with an old 1950s hit called Delicato. So as you can see, he's using that rumba bass line there again, and a lot of bluesy, boogie-woogie figures over the top. Here's a waltz that he wrote for his mother, and uh, this is sort of classically gospel chord changes once again. It's called Dorothy.
Yeah, so classically gospel chord changes there. You'll notice the one to the three to the six. A lot of that sort of thing. And often the two five at the end is a dominant two five. That sort of a cadence just smacks of classic New Orleans R&B. Now, uh, one of the pianists that, that came along right around the same time as Dr. John in the New Orleans piano lineage was, was arguably the greatest of them all, a man named James Booker. Booker has been the biggest influence on my life of any pianist, personally. Uh, he was technically extremely gifted and quite a unique player, had his own bag. Here's how he would play a slow 6-8 blues in the key of E-flat. Yes, he had a very fluid style with lots of uh, effusive, effervescent licks in the right hand. Um, Booker pioneered sort of his own style of New Orleans R&B, mostly centred around what the left hand was doing. He came up with an unusual sort of a left hand sequence that some think he may have lifted from Beethoven. It went sort of like this. So he's got the bass note moving around with the little finger and then chords punctuated with the rest of the left hand up close to the middle C. And when you put the right hand with it, it almost gives the effect of three hands playing. Here's what he did with Tico Tico. Kind of a unique, uh, unique sort of a left hand style there, which you didn't really hear in uh, jazz, blues, or, or anything outside of classical music, really. Booker also used to do sort of his own mutant version of stride piano, where the left hand is, uh, is jumping from the low register up to middle C and back. He used to put these little grace notes in the middle. So instead of a traditional left hand like, like that, he would put these little skip notes in.
just to sort of fill it up a bit and give it a bit of bounce. So you like to do sunny side of the street like this. Here's an example. So now a protege of Booker was a very famous man by the name of Harry Connick Jr. Uh, Harry was fortunate enough to receive a few years of piano lessons from James Booker in the early 80s when Harry was just a young kid. Uh, fortunately Booker was a very troubled individual and passed away when Harry was only about 13 or 14, thus ended the lessons, um, but he imparted a lot of great wisdom and style upon Harry and Harry never misses an opportunity to, um, to shout out Booker and his performances and and his recordings, I suggest you check out the tune Booker from the She album. Um, one, of the, one of the great examples of Harry playing a Booker style is in his, Harry's version of the tune Avalon, an old jazz standard, in which Harry employed the rumba left hand pattern and a whole lot of Bookerisms in the right hand. This is from his album 20, so you might want to go back and check that out. Played it a bit like this. So yeah, most of these uh, New Orleans piano greats sadly have, have passed on, but there is a, a current generation keeping it alive, like Harry Connick, John Cleary, who comes out to Australia quite often, uh, New Orleans pianists like Tom McDermott, Josh Paxton, uh, British pianist Dale Storr. Uh, there's a few, there's a few good ones out there. It's a relatively uncommon style, you don't hear it terribly often, but uh, it's quite emotive and quite funky. So also check out Henry Butler, by the way, sadly passed away a few years ago. He was excellent. Now, in terms of sheet music resources for exploring the style further, I can highly recommend the James Booker Collection by Hal Leonard Publishing. That's an excellent book by my friend Josh Paxton. Uh, there's a two book set that comes with uh, videotapes or I presume DVDs now called Dr. John Teaches New Orleans Piano, volumes one and two. They are great. And I poured over those for many years as a kid. Those are probably the two best resources for getting into the style, although I believe there's also a Professor Longhair book of transcriptions, which is a little more accessible probably than the Dr. John and the Booker, a little less technically demanding. I think that's also on Hal Leonard. And there may even be some John Cleary or Harry Connick transcriptions out there as well. So happy hunting.